We have covered it before a lot. The system used to distribute COVID relief funds was rife with abuse and plenty took advantage. But new analysis from the Associated Press highlights just how massive this grift actually was. Fraudsters potentially stole more than $280 billion, I'm going to say it again, $280 billion in COVID relief, and another $123 billion was either misspent or just wasted. That brings the total loss to a whopping 10% of the $4.2 trillion that was handed out by the U.S. government in COVID relief. And to make matters even worse, that number is certain to grow as investigations continue. One of the reporters who broke that story joins me now, Richard Lardner, investigative reporter for the Associated Press. Richard, when this was happening in the early days of COVID, we knew that in order to get the money out quickly and to everyone that needed it, there were limited guardrails, right? That we knew that there was going to be some grift, but these numbers are astronomical. How on earth did they get this big? How was it this bad? You, I mean, you had to just, what, put your first name and home address and the government would send you a check? Almost. Um, yeah, I mean, the numbers are staggering and they're still evolving. Um, uh, this is potential fraud, um, and this is really going to take years to sort out. Um, federal prosecutors, investigators, federal inspectors general are still digging into all these numbers, um, and it's just going to take a while to really know uh, what what all the the actual numbers are. Um, Not not all of these people were seasoned criminals and fraudsters. You point out that over 2,000 people have been charged by the government. How widespread was it? Very widespread. I mean, there certainly were criminals and gangs and, and overseas groups that, that took money. But one of the surprising things as we went through and looked at cases was, and we know this in the story, you know, the roofing contractor in Montana, a former state lawmaker in Missouri, a soldier in Georgia, um, just the sort of wide swath of people uh, who saw a chance for an easy payday and took it. During this country's darkest moment, Congress did pass bills last year that would give the federal government more time to catch these fraudsters. Has it made a difference? Uh, well, um, again, that's going to take time because the statute of limitations uh, has been increased from five to 10 years for crimes related to the small business administration programs. Um, and there's a push to extend that same statute of limitations for pandemic unemployment assistance fraud from five to 10 years. So uh, if prosecutors, investigators are gonna be busy with this for a very long time. So is any of this money getting recouped in a significant way? That's really hard to do. Um, Larry Turner, the, the Labor Department Inspector General, uh, at a hearing earlier this year, uh, this quote sticks in my head. He said, uh, fraud is so hard to get back once it goes out the door. Because a lot of this money was spent quickly. Um, we've all read stories about people who bought fancy cars, went on nice vacations, bought expensive clothes. Um, it gets spent quickly, and it makes it very difficult to get it back. What was the most surprising thing in your reporting, right? You knew going into this, the grift was bad, it was a problem, we all did. But as you dug in, what just blew your mind? I just, it, I mean, it's such an ocean of numbers. Um, I, just one data point that really sort of sticks in my head here, and it's maybe not the, the most dramatic one. Uh, the Small Business Administration Inspector General has uh, more than 80,000 actionable leads related to pandemic relief fraud. 80,000 um, leads. Estimated, they've estimated that's a century's worth of work, 100 years worth of work to go through all of that. Um, so that gives you a sense of just the scale and, and scope of this. A century's worth of leads. I, I get it. People like free stuff. But this money was designated for individuals, for families, for businesses that were on the brink of absolute failure, people losing their homes, their cars, their everything. They were just trying to put food on the table. That was the goal of the government. Yet we saw scores of people take the opportunity to make it a payday. That is something else.